Hey guys, um, I'm going to go to bed very shortly. I'm just going to pull one card for you. Um, I've already got the information written down, by the way. This is the update on the Ukraine situation. Um, I did say two months. Now, I'm not a timing expert when it comes to tarot. I'm completely upfront about that. I usually do it by quarters, so spring, summer, winter, autumn, that kind of thing. Um, from the beginning, I said with this one, for some reason, I had something significant after two months. Now, we're one month in, and Russia is saying they're, they're going to... They haven't said step back. They said the first phase of this takeover is complete. It's the first phase of it, which means there's still more to go, okay? Um, but I still feel something significant around the two month mark now i'm just going to pull a card just just to hold something up guys. oh guys i'm just going to pull a card to hold something up for you to see it is actually the ace of cups which is love okay this is literally love overflowing from this cup it's the most perfect card ever i mean when you see about how all the world has come together to you know the donations to support everything there um okay so this is some of the information I've got now. Um, I just did a quick look into it. It's not going to be in, be in depth tonight, but this is what's coming through. So there's going to be certain zones and strategic wins to save face. OK, so it's almost like they're going to be saying um, there's a piece of land in particular that's very valuable that they wanted. And they've, and they've got that now. And that's going to be great for them. And also strategic wins. So it's almost like there's certain um, places and this, and strategic bombing um, has actually they've done they've done the first phase pretty much like they've said. That's what that's what they're saying. It's all bullshit. They did want to take over the whole of Ukraine. They just can't. They can't afford to keep this fight going. Okay. And there's an internal war within. I heard within Russia. There's an internal war within. So they're going to come out of all this crap about, oh, yeah, strategic wins and all this stuff. It's absolute bullshit. They wanted to take over the whole thing. But, I, but we'll go into it more anyway. So it's just all crap. Whatever they're saying now is complete crap. OK, now. I do feel after all this is over, they're going to say something like their intelligence suggests there was going to be a terrorist attack. Uh, um, and they, they were they had threats from the Ukraine okay it's all kind of cut you know it's all kind of hidden and that that kind of thing so let me read out what i wrote down intelligence intelligence to suggest a terrorist attack etc so there will be information they're going to come up with that they can't release due to its highly um highly secretive nature that proved ukraine was an imminent threat so after this to back themselves up they're going to say we've got documents and we have proof that we knew they were actually planning an attack or, you know, there were certain terrorists within Ukraine that were planning on doing this and that. And that's how we came in and took over. So it's almost like they're going to have documents that come through after that are completely fucking fake. Sorry, language completely fake as well. And again, it's just trying to say, well, it's highly secretive information, so we can't disclose it all. Something like Ministry of Defense or, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, you know what I mean? Ministry of Defense, you know, there's certain secret files. They're going to say the secret files, the public can't have access to it. But it's all crap. It's all complete crap. They're literally going to be making up stories after this to defend themselves. Um, and they're here to get back into the economy again. So it's almost like they need to find proof. I even feel right now they're working on documents and proof. Yeah. So once this is all over, they can back themselves up and it's going to be fake. It's not going to be real. After that, I also had the line um, that came into my head when I was trying to tune into this. Too many casualties and not enough money. That's the main reason, guys. That's the main reason. That their losses are too big and they don't have enough money to keep funding this. And the thing is, they would have money to fund this, but the people that could actually fund it, the ol oligarchs and people like that, they don't want to fund it. All the sanctions and everything that's happened, they don't want to have anything. They want, to back they want it over. They want it over right now. So he could carry this on for longer with the help of certain people. But these people are having massive financial losses. So they don't want to. I just hear, I actually see people turning their back on him. Literally like a room full of guys turning their back. I'm not saying this actually happened, guys. But it's like, um, it's just that, that vision of them turning their backs on him. And ashamed. You know what I mean? It's like, so he, 
they do have enough money to keep funding it, but the people that would give him that money have turned their backs on him. Closed doors. I just heard closed doors. So, and I hear coming to an end. So again, I think this isn't because he wants it to go come to an end. It's because the people that are funding it and are here supplying him, it's coming to an end. They've kind of said to him, this is the last straw I heard as well. So it's almost like there's, a, and again, I've just heard limits. There's limits to, to the funding they're going to give him and they're turning their back on him. So he knows he, I just heard they, um, he knows, Putin knows he has to wrap it up quickly. I wouldn't say quickly. I still think it's going to drag on um, for, for another month or so. But I hear he has to wrap it up. He's been told to wrap it up now, just wrap up. And again, the thing about the saving face in the papers right now, I do believe they're going to come out with stories to try and prove that Ukraine was an imminent threat. Um, and again, that is to get back in, um, into the economy again. I'm sorry, guys, it's quite late here in the UK and I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm really tired. Right. Also, something really, really important with Chernobyl. Chernobyl, Chernobyl. So... Ukraine said they're going to use it and, you know, and try and like stitch them up and, and use Chernobyl. And um, I can't think of the whole story now, guys. It was in the whole paper. Like they're going to try and blame Ukraine for bombing it and put the blame on Ukraine for another nuclear. That that's I don't see that happening at all. But there is a link there. And again, I feel after this is all done with, Russia are going to come out and say, I wouldn't say Russia, I say Putin, to be honest, okay? It's something to do with nuclear waste not being managed here. And it's lucky Russia came in to save the day. So I don't see Russia just trying to blow up as such. I mean, they know that's just going to, you know, I mean, that's mass radiation straight away. But it's almost like they are going to try and place blame. I don't think they're going to blow up and blame on the Ukraine. It's more they're going to try and place blame on the management of the nuclear waste. And almost like being saviors. And it's lucky they came in when they did. I just think something big with that is going to happen. But after, after all this has gone, you know, calm down. Okay. Let's see what else. Now, I did say ages, um, not ages ago, actually. It's probably about a month ago, guys. In my last reading, I said about high-speed trains and infrastructure and everything being real rebuilt. And um, people like Japan coming in to offer to support and help. Now, we've already had Italy come in and say they're going to build the theatre for them again. And I do have countries and ar architects banding in for the rebuild. So this is going to be global around the world. There's even going to be some really, really famous architectures that work for like billionaires and millionaires that are going to come in and try and create the most beautiful architect architecture possible for Ukraine and build it up to be... I actually just got the vision of, you know, Wizard of Oz, you know, the city of Oz, how stunning and beautiful and it's like crystal. It's almost like they, all these people with a special skill set want to come in and rebuild. So there's going to be loads of stories coming in about people coming in to rebuild there. It's going to be loads of countries involved in that, but specifically individuals as well, famous architectures and people that architects that are going to come in and help to rebuild it. Okay. Now, while I was doing this, I did hear the words stepping back, backing down. And I feel the troops are going to back off here now, but there's still going to be more air assaults. So when I mean stepping back and backing down, backing down for me is their soldiers kind of being halted right now and not not aggressively moving forward like they were. It's almost like they're taking a few steps back, but the air, the bombing, I feel that is going to continue. But it's almost like um, Russia really concerned now about the loss of their soldiers before it was almost like washed over because they, they just wanted to win. They just wanted to win. But now it's coming out of all the figures and everything like that. And all these soldiers phoning home and speaking to their mums and all this stuff's coming out. They're being more wary of loss of life. And I, I know that sounds terrible because you should be wary of loss of life anyway. I mean, it's a bloody war. But they weren't. And when I say they, I mean Putin. I mean Putin, okay? Send them all in, win it, get it over and done quickly. Now he's aware of the loss of life. <sighs> the effect it's having. I mean, God, the effect, the families, you know? So it's it's more aware of loss of life now of his troops, whereas before it was more, I hear, gung-ho, just charging in and just trying to win and get it over and done quickly. Right, what else have I got here? I feel ultimately, they said they're still going to keep going, apparently, from this evening. They've only done one stage. They've still got more to do, from, from my understanding of what I've just seen. Um, 
I do feel they are going to try and eat officials in the country, but on the outskirts. And I heard a sliver of land. So it's almost like they're going to take a piece of land that they won't give back. But I hear a sliver, a sliver. I can't even say it. So compared to the whole of Ukraine, this sector is going to be quite small. But again, they're going to say, I hear high importance, high importance here. It's going to be really, really high importance. It's like somebody coming in to take over the whole of the United Kingdom and they managed to take Cornwall. You know what I mean? But I mean, yeah, but it was Cornwall. It wasn't London, but it was Cornwall. And Cornwall is of high importance to us. You know, you don't know what we're going in there for, but there's certain strategic things we, we wanted in that part of the land. It's so important to us, Cornwall. That's all we wanted. We didn't really want London. We wanted Cornwall. It's kind of that thing. It won't be Kiev. I just don't feel they're going to have, I don't feel they're going to fully take over from Kiev. I still feel they're going to get pushed back. I hear leave. It's not even just pushed back. It's more just leave. Um... Okay, so I keep hearing a sliver, a sliver of land. So it's almost like this piece of land is pretty small, but they're going to say it's what they really wanted anyway. Again, it's all that ego thing. Are oh, we lost? But we didn't really lost because we got what we came for, which is this tiny bit of land. Okay. Also, let's have another look at this. What I've got written down the last bit. Yeah, it does say a sliver of land where in reality the the intention was to have a full on invasion and to completely dethrone Zelensky. Now, dethrone is a really important word here because it's almost like him being a king. They see him as the king and they want to dethrone him. And the people's hero came up when I said his name as well. So I hear Putin does not want to be seen as the villain, hence the recent stadium tour. Did you see that that stadium? Um, he was uh, it wasn't a tour. He was at a stadium re recently about the war and, you know, we're going to support our country and get rid of Nazis and all that crap. You know, that was all. Guys, we know it was just trying to win the people over. He's not even trying to win the people over. He's trying to show he has the backing of the people. That's why he did it. He wants to be the people's person. He's like, hey, I'm a people's person, too. My people support me. And the, the whole reason he did that here was to counteract the mass protest. So all these mass protests going on by doing the stadium tour, he, he chose a stadium because he wanted to be surrounded by almost, I hear a fan base, a fan base, okay, to show that he is loved by his people. And I hear um, a political rally like they would do in the UK. And this is insane, but I just had JFK. Um, you know when JFK would do political rallies and everyone would be waving the flags and everyone's so happy to see him? That's almost like um, a vision he had of how it should be and how loved he should be. So that's why he did it. And it was literally to counteract all the protests going on. Last thing, guys, as well. The people that were arrested are being looked into and marked. Now, when I mean marked, I don't mean like snipers are going to take them out like that, OK? But I mean marked, like a red a red pen through their name and their family and investigated and watched. So even though they're, they're just be let off, I mean, if anyone protests here and got arrested, yeah, you might be on the records. But other than that, they're going to just, that's it. But literally the whole family will be investigated. And they're obviously not going to put that information out there. You know, it's going to go a lot deeper than that. They are being marked to see if there's going to be future trouble with them. OK, so it's not like something in the UK where... You know, you, you get a warning, like a slap wrist for protesting or doing something like that, and then you go home. They are actually going deep diving out here, deep delving into all their family. Um, yeah, it's quite extreme there. But I don't I don't see them in being in immediate danger as such or anything like that. But it's it's almost like they will be watched for years to come. Years to come now because of that, the people that protested. It's not going to be everyone that protested. Not everybody. But the main instigators... It's not just them being watched. It will be their whole family. It's going to be insane. Right. That is everything in this reading. I am off. I still think Putin wants to do this JFK or Trump rally or, you know, a massive, hey, look at me. I'm love. I'm powerful. I'm strong. I'm loved by my people. That's why he chose the stadium. Right. Ah, oh, guys, I still feel we've got weeks more to come of this. I do. I do. And especially when I just heard tonight that it was the first stage. And I'm like, great, so that means the second stage is to come. But I do feel it's going to be more air and tactical than soldiers right now because he really, he just realised the loss of life is so huge. He can't keep making up lies about the loss of life, OK? He can't lie. I mean, you can't lie and say you only lost, say, say you said you, you lost 3,000 Russian soldiers. 
what about the 10,000 Russian soldiers' mums, dads and family that are going to say, oh, so my son's just disappeared? He, he can't do that. He can't. It's going to be uncovered. It's so bloody obvious. It's so obvious. So that's why I feel he's trying to pull back. I just heard pull back on resources as 